By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have reached the top 8 of the Hill Giant Cup, the old school magic tournament held in the Netherlands, in Hilversum to be precise. And in the top 8 we're going to look at two decks that are very similar, but are still a little bit different. We've got Wilfred who's playing a line dip deck and he is taking on Edo and he's also playing with Savannah Lines and Surrenders, but also with Land Taxes. So uh, his deck is more like a tax line deck. But again, these decks are very similar, so we are in for a really tight matchup. Now, I've got beautiful deck pictures of both of these decks, but before I jump into the deck deck section of this video, I would just like to point out that, as always, you can also choose to skip this section, go to the match first, maybe check out the deck decks after. If you want to do, to do that, the easiest way to do it is by checking out the description below, because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, and it'll take you straight to the action. And here here I'm going to continue with the deck decks and I'm going to start with the deck of Edo. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Edo, a lion tax, so named after the Savannah Lions and the two land taxes in the deck. And it is a blue and white deck and it's not as controlling as you may expect from a blue and white. There are of course control elements in here but I think it's really an aggressive mid-range deck as well. I mean look at all those creatures. We've got four Savannah Lions, four Suchis, four Serendips, two Sarah Angels. So it really has a lot of beef, so 14 creatures. And then of course we've got the four Mistress Factories as well, and they kind of count as creatures also. So just a lot of ways for Edo to deal damage here. And I'm not surprised to see this deck do so well here at the Hill Giant Cup. It's looking really, really strong. And then of course we have the blue power cards, Ancestral Recall, Time Walk. We don't have a Time Twister in here. I don't think it's really necessary. We don't have a lot of counter magic in the deck. We only have one mana drain. So he's really not choosing to go for that counter uh, strategy, but he does pack the one mana drain, of course, the best counter spell in old school magic, probably. And then when we look at the white package, you know, we see the full control suite here in the deck, right? We see Disenchant, Swords to Plowshares, and actually an extra Divine Offering as well. So he's playing four Disenchants and a Divine Offering. That's quite interesting. Most people choose to play with three Disenchants and one Divine Offering, perhaps then an extra Divine Offering in the sideboard, or Disenchant for that matter. But Edo really went heavy on the, uh, the Disenchants and the Divine Offerings, right? So he's uh, booked five slots in for those cards. That's quite a lot. Um, we also see the full playset of swords, like I said before. Of course, we have that single balance. It's just too good not to play, you know, when you're in white. It's it's so incredibly good. And then we've got this interesting portion of the deck uh, where Edo is playing with two land taxes and two Armageddon. So kind of a mini tax strategy package. Of course, Armageddon and Lantex is great synergy. Lantex and enchantment from Legends for one white. It's just an amazing enchantment. During your upkeep, if you have less lands than your opponent, you can look up three lands, three basic lands that is, uh, from your library, show them to your opponent and put them into your hand. So that's of course insane and it works really well with Armageddon. Armageddon of course destroys all lands, so that means you destroy all the lands, you pass the turn, your opponent will probably play out a land because hey, you gotta play some spells, right? And that means you're activating your own, your, your attacks gets activated uh, by your opponent and that's actually what you want to happen and also looking at this deck I think Le uh, Armageddon is really good in this deck because there are just so many creatures so there, there, there's bound to be a moment in the game where you have better superior creatures than your opponent and that's the moment to kind of slam that Armageddon on the table destroy all the lands because hey you're winning you're ahead of the game with, with your creatures and talking about creatures, I think Time Walk, of course, is a super good card, but in a creature-heavy deck like this, it even gets better. So, like I said, I'm not surprised to see this deck doing so well here at the Hill Giant Cup. And here we see the deck of Wilfred, and the first thing I notice, of course, is that these decks are quite similar. They're both blue and white primarily. Of course, here in the deck of Wilfred, we do see that usual splash of Mind Twist and Demonic Tutor. And I think the deck of, of Wilfred doesn't have the land taxes. It does have one Armageddon, and it's also pretty creature heavy. I mean, look at it. Also playing Suchi, Serendip, and Savannah Lions, playing Sarah Angels. So there, there's really a lot alike. I can say that maybe, you know, Wilfred is, for example, playing with Psionic Blast, so slightly more aggressive that way, although aggressive is not the right word, but I mean, he packs some direct damage, and also he's chosen to go with the three disenchants and the divine offering, so not going for that full set of five. He's also playing with a time twister, a copy artifact, so there are little, like, little differences in the deck, but I think with a match like this, where it's almost a mirror match, 
you know, it'll really be the skill of the player and of course the luck of the player that will be decisive here in the top eight. I mean, we're in for a real, real nail biter here. I mean, this can be this can be really exciting. Um, I'm just gonna peek a little bit to the sideboard here of, of Wilfred. We didn't have the sideboard of Edo on the deck photo, by the way, unfortunately. But if we look at the top here um, of the sideboard there, which is at the top of the deck photo, we see two city in a bottles. And I think that's gonna be really interesting because if Wilfred sees the Serendips on the side of Edo, he could of course choose to take his own Serendips out, put an extra Suchi in, maybe put an extra Cyblast in since there are so many good targets for Cyblast. Uh, in the in the deck of Edo, and like play a city in a bottles in the deck as well. So that could be something to consider. Of course, it would mean as well that he has to take out his own uh, surrenders. And there's an interesting one up here in the deck that is the Spirit Link, which I really like. It's interesting to see him going for that Spirit Link spot instead of, for example, an extra swords. He's only playing with three swords instead of four. So those little like subtle differences are usually what I look at with these lists, and I try to kind of find out like, okay, why would he make that decision, right? It's quite interesting. So maybe Wilfred, if you see this, can you let me know why you've put one Spirit Link in? I think Spirit Link is a really interesting card, by the way, uh, but I'm, I'm just curious, maybe to put on your own Serendip, maybe to put on like a Juzem Jin of the opponent. I know that Juzem Jins have been quite uh, popular as of late, so that could be a great card against that uh, super powerful creature. But yeah, let me know if you're listening to this uh, to this deck deck. Anyway, this is the deck of Wilfred, and we looked at the deck of Edo. Like I said, it's kind of a mirror match. It can really go both ways. It's a 50-50 for me. Let me know in the comments below what deck you prefer and why. Um, and with that said, we are ready to go to the match. Let's jump to the top eight of the Hill Giant Cup. Game number one on the left, we have Edo, and on the right, we have Wilfred. And this is a top eight match, so the winner will advance to the semifinals. Both players playing mainly blue and white, playing with Savannah Lions, Suchis, and Surrendip Fritz, and also, of course, Sarah Angel. So there are a lot of similarities in the decks. But it's all about the subtle differences, I guess, when you're in the top eight. There's a Savannah Lines, by the way, by Edo in turn one. There's a Mox Sapphire by Wilfred and also a Savannah Lines. So we've got a Lions stare down. And I wonder if we're now going to see a Surrender of Freed coming in from Edo. First, he's going to attack here, the 2-1 Lion, offering a trade to Wilfred. This is interesting. And immediately... This game is tense. Immediately, the players are thinking. They're in the tank. They're like, oh, what to do? Wilfred really taking his time here. And of course, he should. I mean, this is a top eight match. Taking the damage, going to 18, deciding not to block. And here, we probably see a surrender exactly. And this is, of course, good timing for Edo as well, now that uh, Wilfred only has one blue mana. Because remember, these players, of course, don't know each other's deck lists. They have an idea, but they don't know how many counter spells is somebody playing, etc., etc. Anyway, here's the attack with the line. Interesting. There's the block, so two damage on there. Are we now going to see some kind of trick? There's a balance. There's the trick. Taking care of both of the creatures here on the side of Edo. And that's a pretty good uh, balance. It looks like both players have the same amount of lands and cards in hand. So it's just uh, a way to destroy that Surrendip, I guess. There's a land tax coming in by Edo. So that's one of the differences in the decks. Edo playing with two land taxes, Wilfred playing with none. And we'll kind of see how important the tax is. I guess not that important. There's a quick disenchant being played out by Wilfred. Wilfred playing with three disenchants and a divine offering. There is a Library of Alexandria, not that decisive yet, because Wilfred only has two cards in hand, but remember, they uh, both play with Brain Geysers, and of course, Ancestral Recall, so they have a few ways of uh, filling up their hand. There is a Suchi by Edo, and a pass. Interesting to note here, by the way, is that Edo is not playing with Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist, and Wilfred is. So Wilfred has chosen to splash those two black cards in. And Wilfred again immediately in the tank here. Really trying to think what to do. 
Both players playing with Suchis, by the way, so uh, maybe he's going to play one as well. No, he's going to play a Lion instead, passing the turn. So Suchi is a 4-4 creature from Antiquities, and when he dies, you get 4 mana. Now, this can result into mana burn, but remember, we are playing according to the Swedish rules, so there's no mana burn here. Making Suchi better in Swedish old school. There is a Felwer Stone. Tapping the stone, tapping another one, tapping two mana. What are we going to see for two here? There's a disenchant on the mox here. So kind of slowing Wilfred down, probably expecting the Sarah Angel. So really wanting to uh, postpone the moment that he gets to five lands or five mana, I should say. There's another lion and an attack. And that means Edo takes his first damage of the game. Going to go to 18. There's a time walk. Okay. That's something. So now we see an extra turn for Wilfred. So he can deal four more points of damage and put Edo on 14. Or, of course, keep the lines untapped, potentially double blocking the Suchi. Going for the attack instead, putting Edo here on 14. And there's the pass turn. So I think if you're Edo, you're you're feeling kind of good at the moment because Wilfred already played the time walk and the balance. There's the attack. And Wilfred on 10. So two very powerful cards out of the deck of Wilfred. And Edo, or sorry, Wil, Wilfred attacking again, putting Edo now on 10 as well. So both players on 10. And there's again the attack. And there's a Swords to Plowshares. There's the Mana Drain. Remember, he's only playing one Counterspell in his deck, and that's that one Mana Drain. And this is important here. I mean, this Swords really had to hit. There are three Swords in total in the deck of Wilfred. He's dropping to six now, by the way. There's the attack again. So now also Edo's going to go to six. Now do remember Wilfred is playing with, I believe, four Psionic Blasts. Or was it three Psionic Blasts? Three, I believe, in the main. He has, he has played zero so far. And look at that life total of Edo. Only one more hit by a line and he's on four. And then a Psionic Blast could be lethal. And remember, Edo doesn't play more counter spells than that one Mana Drain. Now, of course, Wilfred doesn't know that. So he's maybe thinking, hey, I've seen a mana drain. He's probably also packing four counter spells or, or maybe three, maybe a power sink. Who knows? And with the Tundra and, of course, the Felwer Stone open, he's kind of maybe signaling counter magic again. So Wilfred really in the tank here with those two cards. I wonder what they are. Both players on six. This has been a very tense game from the start. That opener by both players with the Savannah line. There we see a Sayani Blast on, on the life total of Edo. Oh, so that's risky. Now, of course, he needs to take damage as well. He's going to drop to four. Oh, my goodness. Did he make a mistake here? What could he have in hand to stop the Suchi? He's just dead. Oh, man. I think he made a mistake here to play on the life total. And I believe he actually came to me after the recording telling me that he made a big mistake. Perhaps this is it. Maybe he forgot the fact that the Cyblast, of course, has damage to him as well. And he was too focused on the life total of Edo. Anyway, um, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, well, it does matter. But at the end of the day, Edo is winning here in game one. Both players are going to dive into their sideboards. And we're going to catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So let's see if Wilfred can correct his mistake in the second game. He's on the play. Ooh, look at that, taking a mulligan for two, it seems. So this is his second, no, ooh, it's third mulligan, starting with four cards. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is so painful. And not something that you want to see, of course, in any match, but especially not in the top eight with these two decks that, like I said, in the deck tech, they're kind of mirror decks. A lot of similarities between the decks. And look at that strip mine here. And there's a pretty big chance, of course, that he's light on lands in his hand. Let's see what he kept. You know, he, he is playing with, with Time Twister, so. so maybe if there's a Time Twister in hand, he can Twister. 
and, uh, and make it all up. You know, you really need power when you're starting with four cards. There's a Savannah Lines by Edo, by the way. There's an Underground C. Okay, Ancestral Recall, that's something, you know. Those are the cards that kind of, you know, get you back in the match. That is really good for Wilfred. And I'm kind of rooting for him because, of course, I want to see a, a game number three. So there's another Plains being played out. So he's got a Tundra and a Plains. There is an Ivory Tower and an attack for two. And I believe the tower is coming in from the sideboard. And now Wilfred drawing a card for turn. There is a Tundra for him as well. So a lot of duels there on the side of uh, Wilfred. The question is, can he do something with it? A Surrender would be quite nice here. He does have a Surrender in hand, I, I believe. It's hard to see though, but I thought I saw a Surrendip. Could be a Psionic Blast as well. It's really hard to see from this distance, but for a moment there I thought I saw a Surrendip. Surrendip of Freed, of course, the 3-4 Flyer from Arabian Nights. That deals one damage during your upkeep. He is tapping two here for a Chaos Orb. Instead, he's going to flip the Orb. No idea what he's flipping on, but let's hope that he hits. There he goes. Interesting technique. It's a hit. No idea how he did it, but it's a hit. Destroying the Ivory Tower. So he really doesn't want to see Edo uh, banking life. Of course, knows that Edo is playing with Lantex as well, and that's uh, that makes the tower very, very good. And there's the pass turn. So let's see what Edo can do. There's the attack with the line first, putting Wilfred on 16. There's the land drop for turn. It's a factory, so that's even more pressure on the board and a pass. So no surrender by free. That's kind of the positive news here for Wilfred. We haven't seen a single Sarah Angel as well. So perhaps a blue card there is a uh, side blast and not a surrender. Tapping four, are we going to see a Suchi Icy Manipulator? There's a quick disenchant by Edo, so bye bye to the Icy. And now, of course, Wilfred is tapped out, so Edo can animate here without taking any risk, attacking for four, putting Wilfred on 12. There's another line, so much pressure here early on on the board. And I mean, there's one card I didn't really mention uh, at the start here, which could really help Wilfred, and that is a uh, balance. And of course, a mind twist. So he, he does have some cards in his deck that can get him back. There's a time walk. It's a good card, of course, but not really that useful at the moment. And there's that side blast that I kind of saw in the hand, I guess. So the side blast destroying the line here, but two more points of damage for Wilfred. So he's already on 10. Now he's drawing his card for turn, two cards in hand, another Psy Blast. The problem, of course, with the Blast is, especially when you use them on the line, is that you still take two points of damage. It's just not that great. I believe he should go to eight here, exactly from his uh, from the Psy Blast. And now are we going to see an Animate? No, he's going to tap four. There's a Suchi. And now you wish you would... Okay, there's a Disenchant. I wanted to say now you wish you kept the Psy Blast, but there's a Disenchant in hand, though. The Dis also would have been great for the Mishra's Factory. And now only one card left in hand of Wilfred here, passing the turn to Edo. Edo still has, it looks like, three cards in hand now and playing out a Suchi. There is another uh, removal spell in the form of a Swords to Plowshares. So four life up for Edo, going to move up to 24. Another pass here by Wilfred. And I mean, Wilfred still kind of needs like a time twister, a mind twist, a balance, like a card like that, like a heavy hitter. There's the attack. Ooh, he's going to drop to six. For a moment there, I thought he had a Disenchant or Divine Offering in hand, but I guess that's not the case. There's the pass. Wilfred really in top decking mode. This is not a place you want to be in when you're one game behind already here in the top eight of the Hill Giant Cup. Is Edo going to move on? to the semi-finals. Let's see, did he find a creature? Demonic Tutor, okay, that's really good. 
I wonder what he's going to look up. I think I would go for Time Twister. I mean, you know, Balance would be good, although Balance doesn't take care of the factory. So it's not great. I guess Balance is, is a bad pick, by the way, because you lose Lance as well. If you want to discard the hand of your opponent, then Mind Twist would be better, but I don't think he's really looking for cards like that. I would go probably for a Time Twister, but maybe I'm, I'm not thinking about a card in his deck. But I think just, you know, shuffling everything back up, drawing seven. You got to play towards your outs, right? You know that you're on six, you're almost dead. Why not, uh, you know, take a risk here? And he's got three mana open, so maybe he's thinking about a Surrender Befreet, but of course the problem with sur with the Surrender is it hurts you as well. You know, you're going to take a point of damage of every upkeep. You're already on six. You don't really want to go there. You could go, for example, also for maybe Sarah Angel, but that means that you've got to first pass a turn, take two more damage, then play a Sarah. Then if, you know, Edo has any removal, you know, you're back to square one. Besides, when you're on four, you know, you die to a single Psionic Blast. So this is not an easy decision to make for Wilfred. Looks like he's made his choice. I am really curious. I guess it's not a time twister or else he would have played it out immediately. I mean, it is a big risk because you're giving your opponent, of course, seven seven cards as well, and your opponent can then start with seven in hand. And you know, oh, this is brutal. This is brutal. But actually, Edo is also destroying his own land with this. So a really interesting move. I wonder what else Edo has in hand here. There is a library of Alexandria. And they're playing out an Ivory Tower as well. I think I would have kept the Ivory Tower in hand. Minor detail though. There's the Tundra and a pass. Now I really wonder, Wilfred, what card you picked up. Perhaps a Brain Geyser could have been an option as well. Although I think I saw it at the bottom of your deck. And both players now in top decking mode. It's kind of like we're starting all over again. Edo just passing here after drawing his card for turn. There we see a Sapphire by Wilfred. There's a Cyblast and a Swords in hand. I think that Swords is really good. We're going to see a Lion. No, we're going to see a Land Tax. And the Tax is so good with Enloa and Ivory Tower. It's really important here for Wilfred not to play out more lands than Edo. He's currently on one land, Edo on two lands, so he's, he's absolutely safe, but you don't want to activate that tax at the moment. There's another pass. And Edo kind of slowly probably moving on to uh, going up to seven cards. I mean, so he can use the Loa. Beautiful altered one, by the way. So two lands, two Moxen for Wilfred. Two lands, one Mox for Edo. And Edo, of course, is going to start to gain life from the Ivory Tower as well. Okay, this is good for him, though. Some pressure on the board, forcing Edo to do something. Edo, of course, still being pretty high up in life on 24. And Wilfred being quite low. It would be really good for Wilfred if he can find that single spirit link that's in his deck. That would be phenomenal for him. There we see a land being played out, a factory. That does mean he's activating the tax on the side of Edo. I mean, that is risky. Tapping five. Are we going to see a Sarah Angel here? Brain Geyser. This is actually pretty good. And I kind of understand this play by Wilfred. I mean, you can not play out the land, draw a card less, and, you know, also, you know, potentially next turn that, that factory can be turned into more pressure on the life total of Edo. So if you don't do anything, you're probably going to die to your own surrender. So, you know, it makes sense. You've got to do something... You know, give him the tax activation, which also, you know, gives him the lower activation. But that, you gotta, you gotta play towards your outs. So now shuffling up the deck, putting the cards back together, and those are the three basics: two planes and an island here for Edo. 
Gonna go into his hand. Oh man, this is so nice for him. Drawing a card for turn. Does he have seven now in hand? Probably more than seven. Insane. So that Loa is gonna be really fun for him. We also see a sword stare in hand. Probably wants to wait using it until after the upkeep of Vilfred. If he wants to use it at all, he can also say, you know what, I want to keep it around because you take damage from it. If he has a Surrendip of his own, that would be ideal for him because he can just block Surrendip with Surrendip. And I mean, I hope for Vilfred that he found that single spare link in his deck. Look at that discarding actually a land. So being very disciplined here. There we see Vilfred dropping to four from his own Surrendip. Now he's going to tap three for a Psy Blast. On the life total of Vilfred, it's already over. No, it's not. He's got the Swords. Oh, that means he's on three, I believe. Because he's taken four damage, but he's gained three life. Exactly, he's on three. Oh man, this is exciting. I thought the game was already over. It took me a moment to realize though, because I was so focused on the fact that I thought he played the Cyblast on the Surrender. But of course not, when your opponent's on four. Duh. But um, yeah, Swords of Plowshare saves the day here. There we see a Disenchant. There's the animation by the factory and an attack. Or not. No, no, no. He's tapping. He's doing something else. So he's played the Disenchant to get rid of the Ivory Tower. And the question is, what is he going to do now? And he's got to animate, right? Or does he have another Surrendip in hand? But that would be super risky. He's going to play a land. So again, giving a land tax activation here. I'm not sure if I would have done that. There's a Lotus. Does he have a Sarah Angel in hand? So he's going to animate first. Attack for two. Is he going to do something with the mana? No, he's going to pass the turn. So I am a little bit surprised about the uh, planes that Wilfred played out because he's giving, I believe, one, two, three, yeah, four lands. Three lands for Edo, so that's a, a, an activation from the tax. What I, what I do when I play against land tax, I always ask my opponent to kind of, you know, put the moxen on one side and the lands on the other. Uh, it's, it's quite a hard sometimes in old school, especially when you have, uh, you know, lands that don't generate mana, but are still lands, especially like a card like Maze of If, you sometimes forget that they're also lands. So you really have to, you know, think, oh, there's a tax here, you know. And there's a Tundra. There's a tap. Ooh, there's a Surrender Perfreet. Ooh, that is, that is tough. Remember, Wilfred is on three. He already had to sort his own creature earlier to stay alive, so he doesn't have that creature anymore. Oh, oh, oh. He's going to draw for turn. He needs something. Balance would be good. Sorts would be fine. Cyblast works, but it would be almost lethal for himself, but it works. Better than dying. There are a few outs here for Wilfred. He's going to animate or not. No, there's a Cyblast. Ooh, he's going to drop to one. He is going to drop to one. You have to do what you have to do. Staying alive, staying alive. Thinking of that song by the Bee Gees. What can he do? There's an island. I mean, perhaps he's also playing out the lands now thinking, you know, how many more basics can Edo have? Playing a copy artifact here. Oh, that's too bad. In response to sword. So that means that now Wilfred has to choose a new target for the copy. So what happens here is a play you see often is where you animate your factory, then you play a copy artifact on your own uh, factory, and then something really weird happens because it comes into play just as a, a land, and not animated Mishra's factory, so you can tap that land to actually pump your own factory instantly. But the problem is, the moment it hits the board, your opponent can respond before it has chosen a target, so you can then play a Swords or a Disenchant, 
in this case on the factory worker killing it and that means that Vilfred has to choose a new target so I guess he chose the Black Lotus in this case and Vilfred has no cards in hand he's on four I mean it's looking super bad for him here we see a Felwer stone by the way by Edo and just a pass so no more pressure for him on the board at least that's something Mind Twist would be good for him here there's still a few cards that can really help Wilfred here. Factory is not the end of the world, but it's not great either. And Edo here uh, going go through his deck because of the land tax. Does he have any basics still in there? At least an island found. And that seems to be it. So the island going to his hand, but he's looking really good for Edo here, of course. Being on 17, having that Loa. And now drawing an extra, you know, land because of the tax. It's really good for him. Tapping. There's the Surrender Pafrit. Land, card number eight. There's a Mox Pearl. There's a pass, so that Serendip can almost kill Wilfred. I mean, he's still on four, though. There is a Sarah Angel. So that's that's good timing, but I guess, yeah, there's going to be an answer in the deck, right? So there goes the Sarah, so Wilfred going to go up to eight. And the damage, of course, for Edo. So he's going to drop to 16. There's the attack. He's going to go to 5. There's a lion. And now we're going to go look at another top deck for Wilfred. What can he find here? There's a Suchi. Of course, he needs a flyer, but at least it's something. Suchi on the board. Could consider attacking here with the factory. Choosing not to. There we see a Loa activation by Edo. There's a Soul Ring and a Mox Emerald. So actually Edo only needs the Mox Sapphire and he's got all the Moxen on the table. There's the attack, putting Vilfred here on two life. Dos life here. And that's it. The end of the road for Vilfred here. But he's had a great tournament reaching all the way to the top eight. There was a tight twister and a mind twist. Oh my. That's always the case, right? You find those cards after you die. After you die, all of a sudden, the top of your deck is great. But when you're still alive, hanging on a, on a thread, the top of your deck is absolute crap. Anyway, um, Vilfred here uh, losing in the top eight. And that means that Edo is winning. Winning here 2-0 with his Lion Tax deck. Really a great result for him. And he will be moving on to the semifinals. Now, if you want to watch the semifinals, I will upload it next week here on the channel. So you can watch the semifinals right here. And uh, before you go, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, and now that you've done that, or maybe you're already a sub, thank you so much. Please like, share, and comment this if you've enjoyed the video because by doing that you're telling YouTube that you like the videos I make and yeah you know YouTube appreciates that and then they go promote my channel on their own site so that would be of course fantastic and phenomenal um, and then I also have my own Patreon page patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and uh, on that page you can become a patron of the show so if you want to support the channel financially as well please check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and you can already support me as a content creator for just one dollar a month so it's not a lot and for that money you actually get a lot back because you get access to the timmy talks discord and uh, you get your name mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video including this one let's go to the end scroll
Just think it is Samba Kazi.